Views of Central Park, New York has become one of those hottest commodities in the world, where we've seen apartment prices soar to over $200 million. This increased demand has pushed engineering to its boundaries, where we've seen a series of these super tall, super slender towers being constructed along Billionaire's Row. And with the topping out of Central Park Tower in 2019, it was also home to the tallest residential building in the world. Hey, wait a second. Isn't there taller towers around? Just to name a few, Burj Khalifa, Taipei 101, and there's many others. Wait, 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 slow down a second. This is where you're wrong, because we're talking about the tallest residential tower. The other ones that you're actually talking about are actually mixed development. Yes, they do have some residential apartments in them, but then more of a mixed development than a solely residential construction. And that's where Central Park Tower takes that title, being the tallest residential building in the world, as that's what it's solely constructed for. It's also home to one of the highest residential apartments that you can afford with the highest apartment at roughly 450 meters with a terrace at about 430 meters. The apartment has magnificent views over Central Park. With the total building height topping out at roughly 473 meters. With this apartment being so high, it's actually taller than the roof of One World Trade Center. Being a couple of blocks back from Central Park, views of Central Park on the lower floors were actually being blocked by the tower in front of it, 220 Central Park South, which tops out at roughly 300 meters. To overcome this, the developers purchased air rights over the Art Students League of New York, where they allowed them to cantilever roughly 8.5 meters over this building, giving us access to the side and views of Central Park. To add this unique feature to the building, they put a series of solid outrigger floors where the plant floors were that allows us to cantilever out those 30 meters drawing the load back into the core periodically. Instead of carrying all the load down to that bottom floor, roughly 100 meters above ground, on these floors, there's obviously unique forces that had to be dealt with, with the column being on the outer edge and having strut and tire actions forcing the load back towards that central core with compression struts and a huge tension tie. If you're enjoying this structural breakdown for Central Park Tower, hit the like button. It really helps me out and gives me ideas on the type of content to create for you. Now let's keep going with Central Park Tower design review. In addition to these outriggers, there'd also be additional lateral stability outriggers periodically up the tower as well to help stiffen up the structure and resist those lateral forces from wind and earthquake, putting the load out into the mega columns like the stabilizing arms on the tower. When we're plotting the curvature of the tower about how it's moving up and down, you'll see that it will curve back in and out on those outrigger floors. Trying to optimize the location of your outriggers is highly critical so for example, do you have two outriggers, do you have three outriggers? And what height should you have them at? And doing a number of series of optimizations during scheming that it may allow them to optimize the floors to allow for the most structural efficiency with minimal impact to the design. To help reduce the wind load on the structure, we can see the top half of the tower is somewhat porous. This allows air to flow through the building and limits the action due to wind on these floors. Also at the top of half of the tower, there's likely to be a tune mass dampener. Due to the slenderness ratio of this building, it'd be highly sensitive to wind reactions and accelerations. A tune mass dampener helps dampen out those accelerations of the building, essentially slowing down the forces of the wind and how fast it moves. This is to help with human comfort inside the building, as a building can sway quite quickly and quite far, even under small service winds. And if you're at the top of the tower, you want to feel like you're built on solid ground, this is the addition of the tune mass dampener will help slow down that oscillation and make it feel like a solid building. Now you could potentially stiffen up the structure even more to prevent this sway under a wind action. This has a couple of negative effects. First up, you've got a thicker structure, reducing the amount of sellable area that you have on every floor. And then stiffening up the structure can also have a negative effect as well. Sometimes the stiffer the structure is, the worse the earthquake loads are going to be. So when we do a dynamic assessment, the flexibility in the structure in the earthquake actions helps dampen out a lot of that force through those oscillations backwards and forwards. So it's really a balancing act of how stiff you get your building. Because there's one aspect you want to soften up your structure to help with that earthquake. But you want to stiffen it up as well to help with your wind loads. If you do soften your structure too much, you can have a peak resonance effect as well. It's a curve that shows the peak resonance effects due to oscillations in crosswind effect. And as you can see, it has a bell curve and it's peaking at one point. So if you made your structure so soft, 
you may actually have worse wind loads on your design. So it's a balancing act between earthquake and wind about how soft you make your design. And to overcome some of the actions of softening up your structure and that oscillation, that's where the tune mess dampener comes in. Something that can limit construction how you can access the building during construction phase. This is not only just for the crane that obviously has to lift product up to the top of the building and you having to book in the time for that crane to make sure your equipment is on the floor that you require, but also getting up and down the building. And quite often, especially in buildings of such size, you need to book in access to the temporary lifts that are on the outside of the building. So how much access you have on outside of the building can actually slow down your construction time. And generally on such a building, it's not just hitting a button and going up whenever you want. You need to book in the time. So when are you going to go up the lift and when are you going to come back down? And by these photos from the external facade of the building during construction, we can see they've got a number of lifts in this building to increase construction time. They've got about four or five. So this allows them to access the building quite quickly and not limiting the amount of time that people have to wait for that lift. So by adding the additional lifts as required on the external facade of the building, it both speeds up the time, reduces the amount of damage to the existing lifts, and generally reduces the amount of construction time for both construction and fit out. Another key aspect to any tall building design is how can you access the outer facade? And these put unique actions on our design that we have to look for but also allow for a clear space on the top of the tower to give you access to the outer side of the building. As these buildings are normally made of a lot of glass, glass can get dirty over time, so it needs to be periodically cleaned. So you need to have some way of accessing the external of the building to either repair or clean the structure. This is generally done with access units known as building maintenance units or BMUs. And as we're flying over Central Park Tower, we can see a series of these BMUs around the top of the tower. They're built on boom arms that essentially go out, which people can access in as they're going down to clean the windows. Some of the design actions needed to consider when putting this on is on the outer side of the facade. That potentially can put lateral forces on either your parapets of the upper level of your facade, or even on the window frame. So when you're designing buildings, making sure that you've got some sort of access point to allow you to service the building is highly critical. As over time, when the building gets dirtier, these glass monuments will become less and less appealing. The demand for apartments in New York is pushing engineering through its boundaries with the requirement of these super tall, super slender towers. And now we have Central Park Tower being the tallest residential building in the world. Are there any other buildings you want me to cover in detail? Please comment below. And if you've made it to this point, you please like this video, so don't forget to hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to this point and interested in instructional engineering, hit the subscribe button and to get all updates, you need to ding the bell. And I look forward to seeing you next week with my next video. Bye.